Now it's time for what I think is the ultimate in sponge cakes, a doboche torte. This is eight thin layers of sponge cake with chocolate buttercream, a caramel fan, and toasted hazelnuts. But before we get to all that decorating, it all starts with the sponge cake. I've got an eight inch cake pan here, but it's not to put the sponge batter into. I'm actually using it to trace circles on parchment. I'm going to paint the sponge cake batter onto these circles to bake them. So using a, a marker, you can use a pencil. Just trace around. After you trace your circles, flip your paper over when you put it onto your baking tray. That way, the ink is on the bottom and you won't get a transfer of ink onto your cake. So I have four trays, each with two circles traced onto them. So now I can get to the sponge cake batter. I have eight egg whites here at room temperature. I'm gonna whip them to a stiff peak, adding two tablespoons of sugar as I'm whipping. I'll set the whites aside, and now I'm ready to whip the yolks. And I have the eight yolks from the whites I separated, plus an additional two yolks, so 10 yolks in total. I'll add to this a cup of sugar and a teaspoon of vanilla and whip this until it's thick and rich and doubled in volume. This will take about five minutes. Now I need to sift on my dry ingredients. Three quarters of a cup of cake and pastry flour and a quarter teaspoon of salt. I'll just sift this right in over top. And I'm going to use my whisk attachment to pull the flour through the whipped egg yolks. And now I'm adding melted butter. I'm going to use the same technique I used for the Genoa sponge, adding five tablespoons of butter to the batter by mixing some of the batter into the butter. But I'll loosen it up, mix it in. I'll work that butter in. And now I can add the whites, first a third. You might find it easier to switch from a spatula to a whisk. That way you're treating the whites gently and less inclined to deflate them. Now for the remaining whites, all in at once. Now I'll bring my trays over, grab a little offset spatula, and it's time to start painting with sponge cake batter. I find each layer of the sponge cake takes about a half cup of the batter. Dollop it right in the center, then use your spatula to basically color in the lines. I go just inside the tracing to leave room for the batter to expand as it bakes. And I'll just continue on with the other layers. Now, what's important is these sponge cake layers take no time to bake only five to seven minutes in a 350 oven, and they'll turn just lightly brown only around the edges. Here we go. The sponge cake layers are ready to come out. But now it's time for me to get the buttercream ready while the cake layers are cooling. So I'm going to separate five yolks. What's important is that your eggs are warm. So just like I warmed my eggs in their shell to make that Genoise sponge, I do the same for this buttercream frosting. Pop this on the mixer and I'll whip the egg yolks on high speed, this time with a quarter cup of sugar. The egg yolks with the sugar takes about three minutes to whip until they're frothy and light. So I'm gonna add a tablespoon of water to a sauce pot, add a quarter cup of sugar. I'll also add a touch of corn syrup, just a teaspoon. I'm gonna heat this on high heat and there's no need to stir it, but you want to have a candy thermometer on hand to bring the sugar to the proper temperature, which is 238 Fahrenheit. Now with the mixer going on high, I'll add the sugar, pouring it down the side of the bowl. Once you've poured in the hot sugar, you want to whip the egg yolks with that sugar until it cools to room temperature. I'll let this go for another minute while I'm measuring a cup of butter to have ready to add, making this truly a French buttercream. 
There we go. That egg mixture is cool to the touch, so I can add my butter. So with the mixer running, I'll add it a piece at a time until it's fully incorporated. All right, now it's time for a teaspoon of vanilla and a pinch of salt. Give it a quick mix. I'll add five ounces of melted chocolate. This is bittersweet chocolate that's been melted and cooled to room temperature. And I'll mix this on slow and pour in the chocolate. Oh, this is so decadent and rich. And now to get ready for the caramel fan. I've got a tart ring that's seven inches across. To get it ready, I'm just gonna dip a paper towel in a little bit of vegetable oil and just lightly grease it. I'll set this on my parchment paper and I'm ready to make some caramel. Half a cup of sugar, and I'll put this half a cup of sugar in my pot with just a couple tablespoons of water. And just about a tablespoon of corn syrup when caramelizing sugar, you want to boil it on high heat, uncovered and without stirring. Brushing the sides of the pot with water keeps any sugar splatters from forming and crystallizing. You don't need a candy thermometer here. The color of the caramel is your guide. Once it starts to turn amber, you want to be ready to move. There we go. So I've got a light amber color, and I'm going to pour about half of this sugar right into the center of the tart ring, and just drizzle the rest over the hazelnuts. Now you can lift your cutting board, and I want to fill in the blanks here with my caramelized sugar. The key is not to let it set up completely so that it's hard. It's starting to hold its shape. I'll grab a little palette knife and then just start to loosen it at the edges. Now while it's still fluid, I want to take a chef knife and coat it with oil, that way it doesn't stick to the caramel, and then make score marks. I like to go over those score marks once or twice as the caramel is setting. Got my cake wheel with a cake board. I have my cooled cake layers. You just peel away the paper and you start assembling. You want to keep the buttercream layers thin and sheer. You have the delicate sponge cake layers, and the buttercream needs to match in that delicate thinness. Basically, like spreading jam or butter on toast, just a thin, even layer. Now I cover the top and the sides of the cake, but don't worry if it doesn't look precise and perfect on the sides. The function of the hazelnut praline is to completely cover the sides of the cake. Now it's time to finish up the decor that really gives the Dobosch-Torte its personality. My caramelized sugar has set on the hazelnuts, so I'm just gonna break this into a food processor and pulse this to grind up the nuts and the caramelized sugar. Now, to get your hazelnuts to stick to the side of the cake, you want to have a baking tray on hand, then take your praline hazelnuts and grab a handful, and starting at the bottom of the cake, just press them up gently, letting any excess tumble onto the tray. And of course, you can use those again. There you go. Doesn't that add polish to the cake? To prop up the caramel fans on an angle, I use hazelnuts. Ties in a matching flavor and perfect size. And now for the caramel fan. I want to angle them, propped up on the hazelnut, the point towards the center. And now you see why it's worth taking the time to make that garnish for the dobosch tort. You want to let the dobosch tort chill to set the buttercream, not just on the outside, but all the way through. So give it a couple hours in the fridge. There we go. Sponge cake is something special, and I hope you take all these ideas home to your own kitchen to bake and enjoy.